and for sitting discharged to 5 volts for God knows who, how long. I must say this battery is certainly putting out quite well. If the voltage has been rising for a bit now, it's up to 11.4 volts. Yeah, 11.401. So, we've certainly achieved something, so <laughs> there is some credence to the high voltage method of reconditioning a battery, although this one doesn't seem to be doing as, as new, to say the least. Here is the second batch of batteries just connected to the test setup, and we can even more clearly than before see how the diesel fashion bit device behaves on a rushly connected battery. So we have a minimum voltage of about 14 volts, a maximum of 17.4, and we can see that the duty cycle is just being this little nib that 0.6% or so. And if we move over to the multimeter, we can again see a more stable RMS voltage, which is very slowly dropping. And if we zoom into the waveform, we can see that this battery, just like the other one, is behaving excellently with just a minimal amount of ringing right at the top where the current pulse hits, and then we've got a slowly tapering off voltage, which indicates that the battery is absorbing some of the energy being fed into it. And here you can see the desulfator's behaviour in the rough middle of a charge cycle. We uh, can see that the battery is uh, sitting at about 12 volts minimum, which means that all the cells are working, and we can see that the duty cycle is jumping between a steady lower value which is the roughly 78% which is measuring and about 20% which is this larger chunk here which is kind of varying depending on the average voltage of the battery. If we switch the acquisition mode back to normal from the averaging mode we can see more clearly how the duty cycle is uh, jumping around sporadically between uh, just about 20 something percent and uh, 7 percent. And here is the same battery as so it's starting to reach a full state of charge. As you can see we now have a much uh, lower duty cycle, about 8 percent steady, and a lot of the energy is starting to get dissipated in this ringing noise here. And there's really not a lot going on with the battery voltage itself. It's sitting at a relatively stable level. In maybe one more day, this battery is going to have reached the criteria for a fully charged battery. And here is a battery which is satisfying the conditions for a fully charged desulfated battery. As you can see, the voltage is now very stable, with just a very minor ringing dissipating power from a very short, uh, roughly 3% duty cycle pulse. And as you can see, these pulses are not jittering a lot, so this battery is consuming a very steady amount of power. It isn't showing any trends of change. So at this stage, I'm going to take this one off the desulfator and run it through a cycle. And as you can see, the battery has settled at a quite reasonable 13.858 volts, which is very likely going to remain quite stable even when I turn off the power. Which is indeed the case. And from the looks of this, this is a very fully charged battery, remaining well over 13 volts for a considerable amount of time after the charge has been disconnected. So, since this is a scientific test, we of course are going to need some very sturdy and repeatable test conditions which are going to apply to all the batteries. And during the time I've taken to test the first and second batches, I've worked out uh, a set of criteria which should be easily achievable by all of these batteries, while allowing for a reasonable amount of charging. So for the voltage uh, diesel fashion batteries, uh, they are going to be charged at 25 volts DC at a current limit of 100 milliamps until the current limit is reached, or until one week has passed if no improvement can be spotted. Once the current limit is reached, uh, the voltage is going to start dropping naturally, 
uh, I'm not going to be able to be around 24-7 to monitor this, so this is going to, for the most part, happen on its own. But once the limit has been reached, I'm going to turn the voltage down to 14.4 volts and allow it to charge until the current consumed by the battery is 50 milliamps. Once the current has dropped to 50 milliamps, the battery will be allowed to charge for at least 24 hours. And once it has been allowed that time to bulk charge, I will make a note of the stable float current, stable being defined as less than 1 milliamp change in the float current per hour at 13.8 volts. It, the battery is going to be allowed to charge at a float voltage for a few hours, maybe overnight. Something along those lines. It, the amount of time spent at uh, float charge isn't, isn't hugely important since the amount of energy the battery is going to be absorbing is going to be very, very small. And once it has settled to a stable float charge and has had its current noted, I will run a controlled discharge cycle at 500 milliamps until the battery is at 10.8 volts. The capacity of the battery will be noted as well as the discharge curve. After that, the battery will be recharged to 14.4 volts at a 1 amp current limit and the battery will be allowed to sit until the current once again falls down to 50 milliamps. It will then again be allowed to charge for 24 hours before being subjected to the next 500 milliamp charge cycle. The capacity and discharge curves are to be noted, the battery is going to be recharged using the same criteria, and then I will make a final note of the stable float charge voltage. So as far as the desulfating device is concerned, it is to be connected uh, at a 12 volt supply, and it is to run until the duty cycle first rises and then falls, indicating that a battery has been dead, then started to accept current and has reached a more and more fully charged state. And it is to settle at a value below 5% duty cycle, and it is to have less than or a maximum of one PWM step of the difference in the, P in the duty cycle over a 12 hour period and it is to sit connected for one week if no change is observed. However, if change is observed, the battery is allowed to sit for however long it takes for it to reach the full charge criteria, given that it doesn't uh, go to ridiculous lengths taking more than a few weeks or so which I really suspect we're not going to see any of that. Beyond that, the criteria for the cycling and logging are identical to the test conditions for the voltage restored batteries. So they are going to be cycled twice, they are going to have their discharge curves logged, and they are going to have their float currents logged. We also need to define the criteria for a fully charged battery quite sturdily. So, so that we don't accidentally allow a battery to be partially charged or charge more or less than another one since that we could obviously affect the capacity of a battery. So these criteria are global, they're the same for both voltage and desulfate restored batteries. And a bat full battery is to draw less than 50 milliamps at 14.4 volts for 12 consecutive hours or it is to enable a stable below 5% duty cycle on the desulfator with no more than one PWM step of duty cycle ripple for 12 consecutive hours. And a battery is to hold a stable less than one milliamp delta current per hour float current at 13.8 volts but shows no increasing or declining trend above 5 milliamps total delta current over 12 hours. These criteria should indicate that the battery has been fully charged and is ready to be cycled and have, it have as much possible capacity as it might hold extracted. So with those test conditions, I think we have a pretty stable grounds for testing the final five groups of batteries which are going to receive absolutely identical treatment as far as these uh, 
test conditions are concerned, during the upcoming weeks I think we're going to be gathering some rather interesting results. And as for the data that's been collected thus far with the two groups entirely tested, it actually does seem as if there's something to the desulfation device. Because if we look at the data with the voltage restored batteries in the dark area and the desulfator in the lighter area, the desulfated batteries have actually performed uh, superior to the voltage restored ones in uh, every area thus far, with uh, one of the desulfated batteries actually besting 2 amp hours in one of the tests, whereas the best uh, voltage restored one uh, maxed out at 1.11 and the float currents are generally just uh, lower overall. The restoration uh, time however uh, is much longer on the desulfated batteries, so usually taking uh, just over a week to satisfy the fully charged criteria so that, that could have a lot of, to do with the uh, superior performance since uh, they are allowed more time to actually absorb energy whereas the voltage uh, restored ones simply cannot be allowed to sit for that long since they just start venting and uh, I have had issues where the voltage controlled ones have simply just uh, started venting considerably making little uh, fart noises here in the workshop so they really cannot be allowed to run any longer, even though one would suspect that the inferior assaults uh, would be caused by the short amount of time they're allowed to charge. So that'll be it for the second part of the battery desulfated science video series. In part 3, which is going to be quite some time in the future, we're going to go through the final results of the tests for all seven groups of batteries and uh, I think we're going to be stumbling into the more interesting territory that when that time comes since uh, we are going to move into the more deeply ruined groups these two first groups have been the ones that were in uh, considerably better initial shape than the rest so we really aren't in a position to draw any conclusions whatsoever from the data we have thus far. We simply don't have a large enough data set. But, I mean, you, you, you have to admit that the results do look a bit intriguing. If not for any other reason than the fact that all the batteries which have been tested thus far have actually been revived with both methods. And uh, that's not something you should necessarily expect from batteries that have been discharged and been sitting for years at a time. However, I should note that I use the term revived very liberally since uh, they all suffer from a very high internal impedance and uh, any practical use of these batteries is basically prohibited. Even when I discharge them at the very low current of 500 milliamps, the voltage will drop below 12 volts quite quickly and they cannot sustain a load above, much above that at all actually. If we do end up with results that uh, seem to coincide with the desulfation device actually working very well. Uh, I suppose I'm going to have to have to do some more detailed testing on the voltage restoration method and perhaps give those batteries a bit more of a workout. Uh, redesign the voltage restoration method or just try them with the desulfated to see if there's any change to be observed with them. But uh, that's for a rather long time into the future I'm expecting these initial tests to take you almost a couple of months there there are many batteries to test and i can only do one group at a time until that time though i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you are finding this to be enlightening and if you have any comments on my methodology or anything i sincerely hope you do leave them since i have every interest in making this as neutral as possible i really want to be rid of any tainting of the results as i hope i've demonstrated so any feedback would be very warmly welcomed either way thank you for watching cheerio